I thank Carl Stores for the Spice Camera and the S3 Neuro Drill System. With Dr. Janik Ram, Dr. Shilpi Bade Sharma, Dr. Ankar Deshmukh from India. 20 year old female presented with history of headache and diminishing vision. She had hydrocephalus. Can this see the CT scan showed a mass lesion. The mass had a cystic and a solid component. And you can see it's, uh, it's compressing on the third ventricle. And uh, this is the exposure we gave. We're now doing a shoulder osteotomy on the keel and uh, rostrum of the sphenoid sinus. And you can see that it's a brilliant exposure from the optic to optic. These are the structures in the sphenoid sinus. That's the planum sphenoidale. It's bounded anteriorly by the posterior portal artery and that posteriorly by the roof of the optic canals. And now you can see that uh, this is the lateral opticocarotid recess. This is the clival recess, paraclival carotids. That's V2. That is actually the VDN actually. You can see the VDN nerve very clearly there. And you can see that's the paraclival carotid. The VDN is going lateral and inferior to it. Very nicely seen. And you can see that's the paraclival carotid. V2. So that's the optic strut and that separates the optic canal from the superior orbital fissure which is here. And that is the maxillary strut which separates the superior orbital fissure from the V2. So that's the lateral wall of the sphenoid sinus anatomy. That's the lateral recess. That's V2, lateral recess, lateral OCR. Maxillary strut V2 and now we start drilling the planum. So the planectomy, the exposure for the sclenia should be a planar transplanar, trans tubercular, transcellar approach. And the planectomy starts from drilling at the base that is uh, just posterior to the posterior portal artery on both sides. And you can see that it's a V shaped osteotomy, the apex directed superior to the optic canals on both sides you can see that brilliantly that is actually the Carl Stowe's drill system I love it actually and uh, you can see that the bluish dura is coming into view we are now drilling over the cavernous carotid region and we have to expose the carotid completely that is the cellotomy being done on the cella and basically the exposure should be very good if we want to resect a craniopharyngioma. So that is uh, the bone being removed from the cella floor and you can see that the Rosen's elevator is used to remove the bone and you can now see the dura. And you can see how beautifully the bone is being removed there. And we exhale the bone first and slowly we remove the exhale bone. We give good warm saline washes. And Washes are being given. And that's the bone being removed over the carotid. We should be extremely gentle while doing this, not to damage the carotid. We have to always do an MOCR drilling in every case of cranio so that the MOCR, that's the carotid Doppler being used.
the other side now you can see I'm tracing the anterior cerebral having known the limits of our carotids now I'm using the uh, retractable knife Kappa Bianca knife to make an incision and once we make the incision we rise a flap the pituitary gland is pushed downwards in this case you can see that I am using a rotatable scissors to make a cut in the dura superiorly See how fine and gentle the movements are, extremely important to paint around the structures there, no harsh movements at all, no untoward movement at all and see how Dr. Shilpi is giving a brilliant view of the part which I want to see. It's a four-handed technique and you can see that I am retracting that dura. and I'll be seeing inside the dura now that's the arachnoid seen very well and now you can see that I'm rising a sort of a head shaped shape flap The most important advantage of an endoscopic procedure, cranio procedure, is that when we see from above, we can't see the superior hypophyseal artery. And here, the first structure we want to save is the superior hypophyseal artery because it gives the recurrent optic branch, which is an end artery. And if we cut it, then the patient remains blind or becomes blind. So that is the major advantage of the trans endoscopic procedure. And you can see the cranio already very clearly seen just trying to increase the exposure. And once we do that, the first structure I would like to identify is the superior hypophyseal artery. And that will be seen on the left of your screen, that is the right of the patient. Yes, you are now able to see the superior epiphyseal artery which is the first intradural branch of the internal carotid artery there. You can see that the first structure we would like to preserve is that. And now we are trying to identify that structure and to preserve it. And now you can see that the carotid artery in the 9 o'clock in your screen. Beautiful view of the superior hypophyseal artery.
and that is actually the dissection being carried on from Uh, that is the superior facial artery on the other side. You can see that very, very clearly. And now we are doing an internal debulking. And this is the way we do it. We never apply traction to the tumor. A suction is held with the left hand and you can see how the scissors is being used to dissect and we do the internal debulking. You can see how gentle the movements are. Basically, we have to do a micro dissection. That's the idea. So we have to do the internal debulking. You can see the stalk on the right side, very clearly seen. And now, you can see that Now that is the uh, carotid artery. And you can see the way we do the internal debulking now you can see that uh, we are debulking the tumor it takes uh, patience here the other alternate to use is uh, the QSA so I operated this patient in a workshop, so we did not have a skull base tip for the QSA. So in any case, we can do the dissection with the scissors and the suction tip. Some Neurosurgeons recommend not to use the QSA inside. Uh, for example, Professor Amin Kassam recommends not to use the QSA. Now, that is the PCOM. You can see the PCOM there and the perforators and uh, small branches going around the capsule and doing a dissection around the tumor now. I want to reduce the tumor bulk. You can see the third cranial nerve already in your picture there. That is at the four or five o'clock position and the optic tract in the 2-3 o'clock position there. You can see how patiently we have to do this case. And you can see the optic chiasm there very clearly there. The stalk onto the right of the patient. 
slowly and gently. Now dissecting the chiasm now. You have both the calcified portions. This is an adamantinometrous variety. Now you can see the liliquous membrane there very clearly. And you can see how the PCOM is adherent to the tumor. You should be very gentle while separating that PCOM. You can already start seeing the scar on the right of your picture left side of the patient that's the scar there in the five o'clock position the pcom is right and down which you can see right going under into the tumor you should be very careful while separating the pcom the perforator injuries are very very important and see how we dissect it very very gently Your movement should be extraordinarily steady. You can see the PCOM going on to the PCA, the P1 and the P2. Your picture, you can also start seeing the basal tip. You see how we are dissecting that very small branch. Even that branch, we are trying to save it. That is the portion very firmly adherent to the region of the mammillary bodies and also going towards the thalamus. So we should be very careful there, no traction at all, very firm. Now you can see the basilar tip there, dividing into the uh, P1 segments on both sides. It's a completely unedited video. It is actually now normotensive, so till the nasal phase we request the anesthetist for some hypotension and then once we enter into the dura, then it becomes normotensive. We can now see that we are placing the lint over the basilar and you can beautifully see the carotid, the anterior cerebrals being given off there. That is the SCAPC on the right side, just had a glimpse of that. The mammillary body is coming into view.
basically trying to fragment the tumor into many pieces because it's very calcified and the scissors wouldn't cut it. Could have used an angle scissors there, but we didn't have one because uh, doing it in a workshop. See the views which uh, Dr. Shilpi Bhatia Sharma is giving, extraordinary views, exactly what I want to dissect, I am just seeing every fiber before I dissect, I don't want to cut any sort of even the smallest perforator, that's the idea. Sometimes so calcified very difficult for the scissors to cut it now no traction at all I'm dissecting the optic chiasm there with a, with a sharp frears like in fact between a knife and a, a sharp instrument you can see that there is no traction applied at all Now that is a region of the floor of the third ventricle, you can see that now we will be seeing the third ventricle very shortly. Now we have opened the base, the tumor is going on the right side, it had a, it had a small capsule there as seen in the CT scan. You can now see, I have opened up the base of the third ventricle and once I go inside, I will be seeing the foramen of Monroe. I am using a 30 degree, you can see the optic, nerves, the chiasm, the tract, the cranium, the pecom, the internal carotid artery, the A1 segment, very nicely. And now I am going to look into the third ventricle. It is beautifully seen there, the forearm of Monroe and the choroid plexus, very beautifully seen, the thalamus on both sides. With a very thin layer of the tumor, of course. The very thin layer of the tumor, of course, but we wouldn't do anything for that. I'm trying to use, a, it was not a skull base handle, so we couldn't reach there. It would have definitely helped us in the whole dissection.
now we are separating the right side the patient already had a di and stock problem so we decided to transect it so just trying to delineate the stock now you can see that uh, the left side of the tumor has been separated you can see the right side beautifully the tumor going on the right side you can see that now the you can see the stock very beautifully the a1 the a com seen above and that's a stock we're going to transect it now because we can't go behind that and try to remove the tumor because we have the pcom and the perforators there we can't dissect it so basically we have to do microsurgical dissection and we have to have a zero degree view so the important point conveyed here is never operate with an angled telescope this is a dictum in skull based surgery never do and i just tried to feel it and then we transected the stock and once we did that we could go around the tumor now you can see the the small branches the vessels beautifully trying to debulk it a little bit more you can already start seeing the pcom there again the views given by shilpi is commendable it is literally a dance between the first and the second surgeon so it's something like a synchronized dancing and now you can see that again you can see the liliquis membrane there the pcom coming into view and now we are separating the tumor gently that's all calcified portion of the cranium fairly a difficult case if it's really calcified so you can already start seeing the pcom there gently trying to separate that now you can see the see how i'm separating it with the open end of the scissors gently yes we have separated the pcom see the way the instruments are being used it's very important to observe that we desire to leave behind that small residue over the base of the thalamus we didn't want to create problems and uh, desired to go in for sort of a near total excision followed by a gamma knife so more than 95% of the tumor has already been removed there so you can see that we are now see the additions there of the tumor so that's the last bit of the tumor we desire to remove this surgery is all about patients patients of the surgeon
and that is the final part which is coming out and now we decided to leave behind that part a small part which is really adherent and now we will see the anatomy of the interpedicular fossa now to start with that's the liliquis membrane on the floor you can see in the six o'clock position the basilar artery basilar tip dividing in the, into the superior cerebellar artery you're going to see now the structures now that's the peak com there that is the basilar artery liliquis membrane third cranial nerve on the left that's the third cranial nerve on the right this is the scar this is the peak com on the right side that is the p2 the p1 and you can see the thalamogeniculate there the p1 perforator very beautifully seen there so that's a very important perforator should be very careful while dissecting that perforator so we have completely dissected the cranio and that small bit we desire to leave now you can see the uh, foramen of monroe and also the choroid plexus patient had a shunt so now that is the uh, small bit of tumor adherent so we decided to again leave a bit now with a 30 degree view you can see the acom the a2 the a1 segment the optic chiasm right in front of your picture there and the gyrus rectus above and a clear view of the third ventricle the optic tract on the right side and you can see the foramen of Monroe and the anterior commissure the A1 being given off from the left carotid can be seen very clearly there and we are trying to go inside to have a look at the anterior circulation which is seen beautifully So now for reconstruction, what we do is before we reconstruct, we irrigate it very well. Now copious irrigation should be given. that irrigation should be given in such a way that the fluid which goes in the color of the fluid which comes out should be the same we should never have bleeding there and that will cause a lot of problems so we should be doubly sure that we don't have bleeding that's the pituitary there the complete zero suction we're going inside the keyhole suction And then what we will do is to keep a gauze piece, a lint, a small lint, and uh, that is the harad there. Just looking for some bleeding, small lint to see if there is any bleeding out there. Just suck over that lint, that's very important. You can see during the whole procedure that we never used our plexly forceps. That's that's the most important thing. And second is that it was a complete micro dissection technique. It's microsurgical dissection. And you found that there was no crossover phenomenon. The whole surgery looked like a piece of art. 
and that is how a cranial surgery should be done. And the patient actually was did not have any problems post-op and uh, recovered from the surgery. See how beautifully it's seen the interpenacular fossa. Now we keep some surgery cell and a little bit of fat there, and then we keep the harar flap. So that's about the reconstruction. In our huge series of cranios, we are we don't face much problem. We are, we don't face much problems because our dissection technique is very gentle. We take care that we plan the surgery very well before with our radiologists and the whole surgery is mapped where we are going to leave it behind. That's fibrin glue being used and that's the post-op. Of course, a small residue left behind. Thank you very much.